Hey guys, this is Austin John 22 coming at you today with another review. This time we're taking a look at another Age of Extinction Autobot Deluxe Class Scale with uh, Crosshairs here. He is the new Autobots weapon specialist and he actually acts as a paratrooper as well. He's got this trench coat thing that he can uh, throw out behind him and it becomes parachutes and uh, I believe that's how it works anyway. Um, he, we only saw it once in the movie very briefly, though it did look did look pretty cool. Um, so. You know, it's fine. But yeah, um, a pretty cool figure. Uh, let's take a look at him uh, first, getting started by getting him transformed into his vehicle mode through the power of jump cuts. And here we have Crosshairs in his vehicle mode. He is a very, very gorgeous Corvette Stingray uh, 2014. Corvette Stingray, to be specific, um, compared to uh, another recent Autobot that we've looked at, uh, that being Bumblebee, who we have here for a quick size comparison in vehicle mode. Uh, Crosshairs clearly has a lot more paint applications, at least in his vehicle mode, than uh, than some of the other deluxes in the line. You can see all this black, all of this is black paint, and he has the silver rims. Black paint continues onto the back, but weirdly does not continue onto the side. and. Uh, the opposite side, and I'm not 100% sure why that is. Uh, we don't get a, we don't get more than a couple decent looks of the car in the movie. Maybe that's just how the car in the movie was, but either way, I think it's a little odd. It looks um, vaguely incomplete, as you can see, taking a look at him from another angle. It just, um, it just looks a little weird like that. Um, decent. Uh, paint apps though, De definitely a cool color green. The black does a good job of offsetting it. Great details with these little vents in the hood and uh, at each of the wheel wells. It's uh, very nifty and I just realized you can kind of see through the plastic with my bright lights. It's uh, a little unfortunate. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a good looking car. Um, it would roll, okay, except we have our weapon storage here. His larger gun connects like so and it sticks out there we go, it sticks out just a bit past the wheels and uh, causes a little bit of trouble rolling it on a hard surface um, you can kind of hear it grinding against the table but it's not too bad, um, I could probably just file a little bit of this off and it would fit perfectly or I could probably get it to fit up through there you can see there's a gap uh, during transformation and uh, not even worry about it at all. Uh, clear windows again, which again, I wish they weren't clear windows because then you wouldn't be able to see the robot bits, but they look good until you start looking at the robot bits, so I guess it's okay. Getting him transformed will remove the gun. And uh, I want to go ahead and give you guys fair warning. This guy is, uh, let's see his head. This guy is a, a finicky transformer. Um, so if I get frustrated, that is why. Um, we're just going to come here. We're going to just kind of loosen up. I don't, I don't know if you guys can see this. I want to show you this because this is interesting. There are these tabs underneath there. You're, you're not going to be able to see them. Um, that are made to hold the arms in place in vehicle mode. There we go. Now you can kind of see it. And they're at this odd angle. And between getting this section lined up and lining up with those tabs, the arms I, on this guy I think are the most frustrating arms I've ever I've ever seen on a transformer. Let's just let's just leave it at that and uh, continue with the transformation. We're gonna loosen the arms up like so. Next, we're gonna come here. We're gonna lift this bit up and fold it down, and that frees up all the arm bits. Let's just fold these back. Let's just bring the arms down. Um, He's actually pretty much done now. Pretty much, that's the that's the worst of it. Uh, so we're going to come down here to the legs. Pop them out from the hood of the car and from each other. And then we're going to rotate his feet down and rotate his legs into their proper orientation. And then we're going to take these rubber bits, which fold up very... Um, very poorly, I think. I think they could fit a lot better. Come on, separate. This is not wanting to separate for me. There we go. Um, take these rubber bits, and you can see there's these 
little tabs that will just insert under this chest panel here. And again, finicky, but you know, what do you expect? I did warn you. Um, like so, on both sides. No, it's not going to stay in. There we go. And now he's got kind of this uh, trench coaty look. Moving the camera up so you can see it a little bit better. Um, he's got this look where he looks like he's kind of wearing a trench coat type thing, like you might see uh, in a 90s action movie. And uh, it, it, it does a pretty good job. You can see on the back, we've got his car bits hanging down, making the, the coat. And um, I completely forgot his heels, which probably explains why he's not standing correctly. He does have heels that fold out. And uh, they're much better. Um, and I think he looks good. Um, I think he looks dynamic. I think the coat, it gets its point across fairly well. Um, it's not perfect, and it certainly doesn't look like it did in the movie. In the movie it was very clearly like a free-flowing single piece that wrapped around his entire body. It looked like a coat. Here it doesn't quite look like a coat. It looks like parts of a vehicle making kind of a coat tail, I guess you could you could say. But overall I think it 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 does its job a lot better than I expected it ever would. Um, one of the clever things I think they did with the characters in this movie while I fiddle with his legs some more um, is they made them all kind of, um, not, I don't want to say stereotypes, but I guess stereotypes is the right word. They made them kind of genre stereotypes for different action genres. Crosshairs here is kind of the 90s anti-hero stereotype, or, um, archetype. There's a better word, a nicer word, archetype. He's kind of the 90s anti-hero archetype, whereas Hound is kind of the 80s, you know, all-American, gun-toting action hero archetype, and Drift is kind of the Asian uh, samurai, ninja, code of the warrior archetype, and I think that's very clever. It, it covers a lot of bases, um, allows for a lot of possibilities, and while I think Hound is by far the most fleshed out of those characters, uh, I think they all come across fairly well, because you already know a little bit about them based on the archetype to which they belong. Crosshairs, of course, being named Crosshairs, has guns, and um, while I remove his guns from underneath his coat, which is where they store his smaller guns, anyway, th this guy has actually been in the toy line before as a Human Alliance Basics from Dark of the Moon. He was a spider tank, and uh, just just wanted to put out there, this character did not just come out of nowhere. He actually does did already exist. This is just his upgraded form, I guess. Um, anyway, now we have these two little guns. Uh, they're kind of dinky, but they're they're guns nonetheless. It's extra weapons for him. Though I do have an issue with them. It's not a huge issue. I mean, they just don't really... I don't know. They, they don't stay in his hands as well as I'd like them to. I mean, they stay. Don't get me wrong. They, they sit there fine, but if you knock them just a little bit, they pop right out. Uh, but still, uh, they look pretty cool. And uh, he then he, then he has the bigger gun. Let's see, pop that out. He can hold the bigger gun much, much better, and it looks a lot more impressive. So typically, when I'm displaying him, I usually keep one small gun and one large gun in, uh, in his hands and keep the other gun stored under his coat, which... If you can see that, there's a peg hole right there, up top, and that is just, it'll just go up there, and if I can get it in there without humiliating myself too badly, we'll just peg right into place, there we go. And that is, of course, where they store in vehicle mode as well. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much Crosshairs in a nutshell, he's got a for detail. He's got a really neat head sculpt uh, with uh, blue light piping that you can see there showing up really well and he's got those those uh, nifty goggles that every time I see them they remind me of the 
goggles that the kid was using in the original Jurassic Park movie that kind of show up for one scene and then we never see him again. Um, but yeah, uh, lacking paint ups in this mode, not surprising. The uh, robot modes tend to do that for this line. Um, you can see a lot of detail from the back of the car, which I forgot to, totally, totally forgot to mention before. The back of the car is the only place that's really lacking paint applications. So you would expect these mufflers to be silver and maybe some red taillights, and we don't get that because of all the black paint. And um, again, we get we get black paint in this mode too. Um, I'm pretty sure this is black paint. This is definitely black paint down here on the legs. Um, we've got silver paint here again, and silver paint on his face, just like with the uh, with the wheels. But again, I feel like there are so many details here that could have been picked out with a different color. We've got all this detail in his abdomen, and yeah, we've got silver picking it out, but there's all this detail down here that I think feel like could have benefited from something. And uh, there's definitely all kinds of detail in his legs and his arms that could have been picked out with, I don't know, some silver or some red maybe. Red would have been nice, and definitely the goggles on his head could have been picked out with some color. Um, but overall, it's a better looking figure than I think Bumblebee was in terms of paint applications, so that's a step up. And speaking of Bumblebee, here we have him in his robot mode once again, so we can show off another size comparison between he and robot mode crosshairs, and you can see they're about the same size. And they actually look, look pretty cool together. Bumblebee, kind of the classic movie Transformers look that we've come to know from the past installments and crosshairs being kind of a new design. Uh, they contrast each other pretty well while also being pretty complimentary and I really like that. So taking him away, let's uh, let's continue looking at crosshairs. He does rotate in the arms and uh, he has elbows. He actually has a couple joints there so that you can reposition his arms for transformation. Um, he does rotate at the head on this ball joint that gives him a little bit of range of motion up and down but not not too substantially uh, in and out at the waist as well as at the shoulders though his shoulder movement is pretty pretty limited by all this kibble and there goes his gun again um, while we're looking at his arms let's also take a look real quick at this detail here which I think is the detail that most needed picking out with paint. Um, you can see he's got some meters there and just some general um, dashboard stuff there. It, lo parts of, it looks like parts of his dashboard actually become his arms. I think that's a really cool idea. But you can't really see them or make out well what they are because they aren't picked out with paint applications and I think that's really a bummer. Anyway, um, in and out at the, the hips as well, though it's blocked by his coat. Though he can do quite a bit of forward motion and he does bend at the knees um, and he does technically have foot movement but that's for the transformation so overall decent articulation not not great but decent and um, it's just enough to get him in uh, a couple of really cool dynamic poses like so still overall only an okay figure and um, this is coming from someone who likes the movie aesthetics and someone who liked the new movie I actually thought the new movie was really good, like I said, uh, for an action movie. And uh, it's not one to stand now. And uh, that is coming from someone who, who freely admits to those things, I really only think this figure is okay. It's, uh, it's kind of an essential if you're trying to collect every character from the movie, if you're some kind of completist. And it definitely is a mold that pushes the boundaries of what Transformers can do at this scale. So it's a little bit groundbreaking, I guess, in that regard, but for the most part, I'm only, I'm only satisfied, like, I don't even know what the word is. I'm, 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 I'm barely content with this figure. It's, it, it feels like it's just barely worth the money I spent for it. So again, just like last time, I'm going to have to say go with your gut whether or not you pick this figure up. Uh, if you like the aesthetic, if you think the coat thing works for you, that's fine. I do believe there's going to be a, a larger scale version of this figure. I do believe there are rumors of that floating around. So, uh, 
if you're okay to bet on rumors, then bet on those rumors and wait for that. It'll it'll likely be much more detailed than this. But if you aren't one to bet on on uh, rumors or you just happen to like the way this looks a little more than I do, go ahead and pick it up. It's up to you. As for me, I'm I'm happy I got it, but having gotten it, but having picked it up, I'm not really sure if I would do it again. Let's put it that way. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you feel so inclined. In the description down below, you'll find a link to my blog as well as to my collections video. Check those out, and if you see something in that collections video that you would like me to review, let me know and I'll see what I can do about it. This has been Awesome John 22 and I will talk to you guys later.